Welcome back everyone. We are continuing our lesson on graphing and in the first segment we did some explorations. We tried to understand where a function would reach a maximum or minimum value, a relative max, relative min, where would it be increasing, decreasing, and we came up with some rules. So just to quickly review those rules. So typically to locate relative maximums and minimums, we're going to set f prime equal to zero and also find where f prime is undefined. So these are called your critical points. And then we're going to do a sign chart analysis for f prime. If f prime is, whenever it's positive, then that tells us the graph is rising. Whenever f prime is negative, that means slopes are negative. That means f, f the function is decreasing. Then to get information about concavity, we're going to set f double prime equal to zero. And then we're going to do a sign chart analysis for the sign of f double prime. Uh, we're going to basically put the points that we obtain from this equation on the number line, select test values, and um, look at what is, what is the sign of f double prime. If f double prime is positive, that will tell us that the function f is concave up. If f double prime is negative, that will indicate that the function f is concave down. And we'll use that information to give, give a rough graph and to complete the actual graph. Please note that some questions may only ask you part one, some questions may only ask you part two, and other questions may ask you to do the entire analysis. And our first example will be an entire analysis type of question. So here we have f of x equals a polynomial function, x to the 4 plus 2x to the 3rd, and we are asked to graph this and uh, along the way to answer all these questions such as where is it rising, falling, relative max, min, same thing with concavity, where is it concave up, down, inflection points, as well as providing the graphs and a complete analysis. So let's begin. So to, to get information about increasing, decreasing, or relative max and min, we're going to take the first derivative and set that equal to zero. So take the first derivative of the function. So differentiating the first term, we get 4x to the third. And differentiate the second one, you get 6x squared. Set that equal to zero. Let's solve this for x. I'm going to factor out. Think about what you can factor from both of them. Definitely a 2 and also x to the second power. All right, that leaves us with 2x from the first one, right? And then from the second one, just a 3. And now that we've factored it, set each factor equal to 0. And that will give us two solutions. And if you divide by 2, x squared is 0, meaning x is 0. And here, subtract 3 and divide by 2. x is negative 3 over 2. So negative 1.5 and 0 are the two, um, what we call critical points. And there is no point where f prime is undefined, typically for polynomial functions, because they're continuous everywhere. Um, their derivatives are continuous as well. Um, so we just put these two numbers on the number line. So negative 1.5 and 0 from the smallest to the largest. And to get the sign chart for f prime, we need to get test values from this interval, this interval, and this interval, and plug them into f prime and decide if f prime is positive or negative, and accordingly we will know whether f, the function f is rising or falling. So select the test value smaller than negative 1.5. So you might select, for example, negative 2 from that region. Select a value from over here, and again, any value would be fine. We're all going to get the same final answer uh, for the sign of f prime in that interval. So between 0 and negative 1.5, I'm going to pick negative 1, and uh, between 0 and infinity, I'm going to select 1. Now plug them into f prime, and I like to go plug them into the factored form of f prime. And we don't really care about what the numerical value is, but we just want to know, is it positive or negative? So if you put, plug in a negative 2 in here, the first part is always positive, it's being squared. Second part, it will be negative 4 plus 3, that's negative. The product is negative. Plug in a negative 1 for x, that part is always positive. Negative 2 plus 3 is positive. The end result is positive. And plug in a 1 for x, so it's positive and positive. The end result is positive. So the sign chart gives us information that in, over the first region is going to be negative, over the second region is positive, and then positive again. And what does it tell you about increasing, decreasing nature of the graph? So if f prime is negative, it's falling. f prime is positive, that means it's rising. So you could do two little arrows rising, or I'm just going to do one big one. 
over that entire region. So notice zero was a candidate to be a relative max or min, but it turned out to be neither because f prime did not change sign over that point. Whereas negative three halves, it was f prime was falling before and rising afterwards. That one turned out to be indeed it was a critical point, uh, a candidate to be relative max or min. Indeed, it did turn out to be a relative minimum. So to summarize, f is increasing on the interval from negative three over two comma infinity. It is decreasing over this side from negative infinity to negative three halves. There is a is there a relative maximum none. There is a relative minimum at x equals to negative three halves or negative one point five. And we could possibly plug this x value into the original function, also get a y value for that. And we're going to do that just as we're graphing it, but usually uh, it will be sufficient for you to, to indicate just the x-coordinate unless the question asks for more information. All right, next we're going to get the, um, do the same thing, but this time to get information about concavity. When I say the same thing, meaning this time set the second derivative equal to zero and do a sign chart for the second derivative. So that will give us information about concavity and inflection points. So let's pick it up from this point where we had the first derivative. Now take that and differentiate it again to get the second derivative. So the second derivative is 12x squared plus 12x. Set that equal to 0 and solve for x. I'm going to take out a 12x and solve for x by setting each factor equal to 0. If 12x is equal to 0, you're going to get x is equal to 0, dividing both sides by 12. And if x plus 1 is equal to 0, you're going to get x is negative 1. Putting those two numbers from the lowest to the highest on the number line. And remember, this is going to be the sign chart for f double prime. So now these x values will be substituted into f double prime. And so I want to get a uh, test value from this interval, from this interval, and that interval. So let me pick, for example, negative 2 and perhaps negative a half. And on the right side, maybe a 1 and plug them into f double prime. I'm going to do that into the factored form of f double prime. So plugging in a negative 2, the first part becomes negative, so is the second part, but the product is positive. Plugging in negative 0.5, we have negative, negative 0.5 plus 1 is positive. The end result, the product is negative. And plug in a 1, so we get positive times positive, the end result is positive. So the sign chart for f double prime is starting to shape up as positive over the first region, negative over the second, positive over the last one. Now, common mistake is to start drawing arrows, just like with it up there, like rising or falling. But remember, f double prime does not tell you anything about increasing, decreasing nature. Instead, it gives you information about concavity. So when f double prime is positive, I'm just going to write down, it's concave up. When f double prime is negative, it's concave down. And on the last region, it's concave up again. Because concavity changed over this point and over this point, at negative 1 and 0, we have inflection points. So to summarize, f is concave up from negative infinity to negative 1, and also from 0 to infinity. F is concave down in between negative 1 and 0 over that interval. Inflection points, x equals to negative 1 and x equals to 0. Okay, now that we have the sign chart for f prime and f double prime, we're also ready to give a rough graph, a rough sketch for this graph. So I created an x and y axis, and we're going to put the important points. If you go back and look at your f prime chart and f double prime chart, the important points were negative 1.5, 0, negative 1, and 0 appeared again, but I'm only going to put it once. So here they are, negative 1.5, negative 1, and 0. But we're going to plug them into f of x. The reason being, we want to see the height on the graph how high the graph goes up and down, so I can give a rough estimate of the graph here. So it, you can certainly use your calculator at this point if you like, and one way you can do this is you can put um, the equation into your y equals screen, and then go to the table and enter these x values, and very quickly you'll be able to get your y values. Of course, zero and negative one are relatively easy to do anyway, um, 
and then at negative 1.5 you might end up getting negative 1.7 at negative 1 you have negative 1 to the fourth which is 1 plus 2 times negative 1 which is minus 2 1 minus 2 gives you the negative 1 I have there and 0 clearly 0 to the fourth plus 2 0 to the third will be 0 so we now have three points that are on this uh, graph so when x is negative 1.5, y is negative 1.7. So when x is negative 1.5, y is negative 1.7. So roughly speaking, a point right around there. Then negative 1, comma negative 1 is also a point on this graph, and also 0, comma 0. Now, if we didn't have our sign charts, these three points are not sufficient by any means to graph a polynomial, right? There is, but we have a lot of information from the first derivative and second derivative. Let's use them. So first of all, we know that from f prime chart, this graph is falling up to negative 1.5 and rising everywhere else. From here, I'm going to create a very rough graph here. I'm just going to, this will be the skeleton of the graph, if you would. So I'm just going to use dotted lines, dashed lines, and it has to go through these points. So I'm also making sure it does that. So it's falling up to negative a half and rising afterwards. But then look at the concavity information. It should be concave up uh, from negative infinity to negative one while following this general shape. So it's going to be concave up up to negative one while it's following this shape and while it's going through those points. Then concave down between negative 1 and 0 while following the general shape. There's a subtle turn there. And then from 0 to infinity, it should be concave up while following the general overall shape. So this will be what our graph looks like for the given function. Again, it's a very rough graph. Um, and you can verify this on your calculators, but you may have to zoom in right around this area to be able to see all the twists and turns and the concavity changes. And we can clearly see our inflection points on the graph, which is this point and that point, and relative minimum on the graph, which is that point right there. So for this example, we did a complete analysis. We did the F prime analysis, F double prime analysis, and the graph. But read the questions always very carefully because they may ask you only a portion of that analysis uh, on some questions. So then you don't have to do everything else. And uh, if you read it carefully, you know, you didn't waste your time by doing everything when they only ask you perhaps to do part one. So for instance, um, let's take a look at an example here. This one says, just find the inflection points for this function, f of x equals 2x to the fourth plus 18x to the third minus 30x squared plus 8. Just inflection points. So we don't have to waste our time setting the first derivative equal to 0, you know, doing the sign chart for f prime. We don't need any of that because for inflection points, we just need to worry about f double prime, right? So let's, let's start. So f prime is equal to, let's differentiate this function, 8x to the third plus 54x squared, 3 times 18, minus 60x. And the second derivative is 24x squared plus 108x minus 60. So this is the one we need to set equal to zero to find the candidates for inflection points. Now notice this one seems, the numbers are really large. It's gonna be a bit of a problem to factor it. But why don't we try to see if something goes into all three of these uh, terms, which it looks like 12 is going to go into all three terms. So let's begin by factoring just the 12 out, okay? So then we have two x squared. So 108 over 12 will be nine, so plus nine x. minus 5. And so now we have smaller numbers which will be relatively easy to factor. So let's try two binomials there. For 2x squared, our choices are 2x and x. For negative 5, okay, I could put the 5 over here and um, negative 1 over there, and I'm going to double check. The inner plus outer term should give me the middle term, right? So now I have plus 10x minus 1x, which is indeed going to be 9x. So this is the factorization that works. 
And if it didn't, I would swap the places and try it that way. I can swap the signs, right? But this is the one that will give me plus 10x minus 1x. Okay, so if you set each one equal to zero, setting 12 by itself equal to zero gives us nothing. 2x minus 1 equals to zero. That will give us x is equal to 1 half. And x plus 5 equals to 0. That will give us x is equal to negative 5. So let's put those on the number line from the lowest to the highest, from left to right. And we need to pick test values in between. And we're going to plug them into the second derivative. And always good idea to plug into the factored form. It makes it easier to do so. OK, so for test values um, from negative 5, and below, I can pick, for example, negative 6. And from in between here, I can pick 0. And outside of 1 half, I can pick like 1. So if you plug these into the derivative, of course, 12 is always positive. I don't even have to worry about that. So if you plug a negative 6 into the first quantity, you get a negative times negative. The end result is positive. Plug in a 0 into both uh, of those binomials, you get negative times positive. And result is negative and I'm plugging a 1 you get positive times positive and result is positive so so we are getting indeed a positive over the first interval for f double prime a negative over the second interval and a positive over the last interval and it's important to do the sign chart because don't always assume it's going to be alternating we've seen some examples they don't al always alternate the signs and if they don't alternate like if I have minus minus that means f prime did not change over that um, value. That means that value was a candidate, but did not turn out to be an inflection point. But in this case, it's concave up here, concave down there, concave up there. And it did indeed change sign, plus to minus, minus to plus. So these points are actually inflection points. And that's all the question was asking, right? It was saying, what are the inflection points? And our inflection points are x equals negative 5, and x equals 1 half. And if they would like us to indicate what the y coordinates are, we can easily plug them into this function and also indicate the y coordinates. But typically, um, you will be asked to indicate just the x coordinates. But read the questions carefully because there could be variations from problem to problem. And here is another example where we're going to uh, we're going to do just a segment of the analysis, not the entire analysis. So I have just changed this problem a little bit, where we're only going to find relative maximums and minimums, and intervals of increase and decrease. But we're not going to worry about finding the inflection points. Okay. So if that's your question. Given f of x, so start by taking the first derivative. And I just also want to point out, sometimes I will give you the first derivative instead of giving the actual function. I like doing that because um, then you cannot even use your calculator to graph the function, right? But you can still do the same kind of analysis that we're about to do here. So please look at the problem carefully. If they give me f of x, start by taking the first derivative. If they already gave you f prime, start by setting that equal to zero. Okay, so here the derivative will be 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. Set that equal to 0 and solve for x. Uh, at that point, if we set equal to 0, uh, you know, if, again, numbers seem to be large and they all have a common factor of 6. So if we factor the 6 out. We'll have x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. This will make the factorization easier. So I encourage you always look at your expressions and see if there's a number you can factor out before you complete your factorization into binomials. Okay, so the next one, uh, so let's try x and x for the x squared. And for the negative 2, I'm going to try negative 2 and positive 1. And check the middle term, so you have negative 2x plus 1x, in the doubt that is equal to the middle term of negative 1x. So this is a factorization that works. And setting 6 equal to 0 gives us nothing. Now, if that was 6x, that's a different story, right? You would, you'll would get a 0 out of that. But this doesn't give us anything. Set uh, x minus 2 equal to 0, you're going to get x is equal to 2. Set x plus 1 equal to 0, you're going to get x is equal to negative 1. So put those numbers on the number line. 
uh, from the smallest to the largest. And at that point, we don't know these yet, so I'm going to erase those. Okay, so those are the, the points. We need to select test values and put those test values into F prime because to get information about increasing, decreasing, or relative max min, we need to know the sign of F prime. So some test values we can select from these intervals are, so from over here on the left side, I have negative two selected. From here in the middle, I got zero selected. And on the right side, I have three. And if you plug them into your F prime, which is right here, six times X minus two times X plus one, And do the analysis that we did previously, you know, for example, um, at zero, you have negative times positive, which the result is negative. At three, you have positive times positive, result is positive. At negative two, you have negative times negative, the end result is positive, right? Because negative two minus two is negative four, negative two plus one is negative one, and the product uh, will be positive. So once we have our sign signs of f prime determined i'm going to put them back on the number line and that tells us that over the first region is rising then it's falling and then it's rising again so are there any relative maximums for this graph what do you think look at the arrows since like it's rising and then falling at that point you have a maximum right over here you expect that relative maximum and over here the arrows are coming down and then rising at at two you expect to get a relative minimum. So now we can answer all the question was asking. So relative maximum at x equals negative 1, uh, a relative minimum at x equals to 2, and we also know the general shape now is rises, falls, and rises. And uh, where is it increasing? Negative infinity to negative 1, and from 2 to infinity. And where is it decreasing? In between, from negative 1 to 2. And if necessary, be prepared, you know, to plug your x values into the original function. If you happen to know the original function, because remember, sometimes I will give you just f prime. In that case, you can't even determine what the y coordinates are for your relative max or min. But if they are given, you can you can do just that. Um, plug negative one into here, and you're going to get seven. And plug two into here into the original function that is, and you get negative twenty. So if you are asked to determine the y coordinates, you can also leave them as ordered pairs for your relative max or min. Um, so if that is not clear, uh, if it just says relative max or relative min, on the test, I'll typically ask you just to give me the x coordinates to save you a little bit of time there. But infinity uh, homework assignment may ask you to find y coordinates from time to time, so be prepared for that. Okay, one more example, this time for the, uh, for the entire analysis. So you have a function f of x given by 4x to the third plus 3x squared minus 6x plus 5. And we're supposed to do now the complete analysis. Where is it increasing, decreasing, um, any local maximums or minimums, also known as relative max, relative min. Also, where is it concave up and down, as well as any inflection points. And in addition, I would even like for you for this one to give me a rough graph. What will the graph look like? So for this one, I'm going to assume that you're going to pause the video first, take a few moments to work it through, and then come back and check your answer, please. Okay, so I'm hoping that you took your time to work this out on your own and you're coming back to check the answers. So since we've seen the ideas previously, I'm going to go through this relatively quickly. But if you have questions, please... Um, post them in our discussion boards or send me an email or ask me in class if you're a face-to-face -face class student. So we're going to do everything, right? So let's start with the first derivative. So that'll be 12x squared plus 6x minus 6. And from there, I can factor out the 6 from, uh, six from all three terms, leaving us with 2x squared plus x minus 1. Next, factor that trinomial into two binomials. For the 2x squared, you can try 2x and x. And for negative 1, 
Okay, I'm not going to put the negative here because this is going to get multiplied with 2x. It will give me a negative 2x. I'd rather put the positive one on the outside and negative one on the inside. And if you try inner plus outer, you'll have negative 1x plus 2x. And that will give us the positive 1x that we have here. So that is the correct factorization. And set them each equal to 0. And solve for x. And you will get x equals... 1 half and x equals to negative 1. Okay, so we would put those on the number line and we'll pick test values in between the, uh, so negative 1 on the left, 1 half on the right, and pick the test values in between them. So here I'm going to just give you the answer, so please do your sign chart carefully there. Um, so I, from here I pick negative 2, from the middle 0, from here positive 1. I plug them into F prime and did a sign chart analysis to find positive, negative, and positive, which tells me that it is rising, then falling, and then rising. So at this point right here, we expect a maximum, relative maximum at negative 1. At this point, uh, uh, at, at 1 half, we expect a minimum. So with that, we can fill in some of the blanks. So it is um, increasing from negative infinity to negative 1, but also from 1 half to infinity. It is decreasing in between, from negative 1 to 1 half. And a local max or relative max occurs at x equals to negative 1. And you can plug that into your f of x to get a y-coordinate, which will be 10. And a local minimum occurs at 1 half. So you can either leave it like this or like that, depending on what the question is asking for, just x coordinate or x comma y coordinate. And at one half, and if there need be, plug that into your f of x function to get your y coordinate there. So one half comma 13 fourths is our local minimum. Okay, for concavity inflection points, a very similar analysis will be needed, right? So take the second derivative, since this was our first derivative, second derivative will be 24x plus 6. And set that equal to 0, solve for x. So you can subtract 6 and divide by 24. We're going to get negative 6 over 24, or negative 1 fourth. So negative 0.25. So that's the only number there is to put on the number line for f double prime. So negative one-fourth goes on the number line. We want to see the sign of f double prime on either side of this potential inflection point. So I would pick uh, perhaps like negative one on the left side and zero on the right side of that. And plug those numbers into your second derivative. So at zero, clearly it's going to be positive. At negative one, it's going to be negative. So first f double prime is negative. Later, after negative one-fourth, it's positive. So this tells us it's concave down over here and concave up over there. So to finish the question, it's concave upward um, from negative one-fourth to infinity, concave downward from negative infinity to negative one-fourth, and inflection points only one, concavity changed over that point from negative to positive. So at negative a quarter, uh, we do have an inflection point. And if there need be, you can plug that in, and you can get the y-coordinate, plug that into f of x to get a y-coordinate as well. Now, what will the graph look like? So it should be rising, falling, and rising. That should give us the overall template, the skeleton of the graph. So rising up to negative 1, falling up to 1 half. So I have a very rough graph created here. Rising up to negative 1 falling up to one half okay and let's uh, also carve the graph now using the concavity information so it should be concave down up to roughly negative a quarter so here's my negative a quarter so it should be following the shape of this graph while at the same time going concave down up to this point And everywhere else, it should follow the general shape and concave up. So here we can see, here there is a relative minimum, just like we expected. Um, my graph is a little bit shifted. I think I'm going to do a little correction there. 
So the maximum I should be reaching at negative 1. And after that, it's falling. So again, double checking. So it was rising up to negative one, falling up to one half, but then concave down up to negative one fourth. So rising up to negative one. All right, so here we have a maximum around negative one. Around x equals negative one fourth, we have our uh, inflection point, one of them. Um, it's actually the only one. And another uh, important point, a minimum at one half. So there is our rough shape for our graph there. So as you can see, this, this section is really not as challenging as the last section on related rates. It's quite repetitive. You're applying the same technique over and over. But yet each question is a little bit different than the other one. So it's still doing plenty of practice questions. It's really important for you to prepare for the quizzes and the test. So on the next segment, we're going to do a couple more questions. But also we'll take a look at uh, a new concept, which is finding absolute max and absolute min of a graph. See you in the next segment.